So we're going to talk a little bit about differentials. Um, I, I got a request or two from a few people to talk about diffs, and um, I figured we could talk about like ball disc versus gear diffs and diff tuning, front, center, rear differentials. Um, so why don't we jump into it? Uh, let's start with ball diffs, okay? A, a ball diff, all a ball diff really is, is basically two ball bearings that are coupled to each other. All right, so. Examples of ball diffs would be like these three cars here. These are all 110 scale buggies. These are two-wheel drive. This one's four-wheel drive. Uh, two-wheel drive buggies have one gearbox in the back with one ball diff. And then the four-wheel drive buggies will have a ball diff up front and a ball diff in the rear. And if you were to take a cross section of the ball diff, it's relatively straightforward. You have your, your diff gear or diff pulley, right? This is a belt drive car here, so it would be a diff pulley. Either way, that would be sort of your drive gear, if you will. And then on either side of that gear, you have a plate. And then inserted in the gear or the pulley, you have diff balls, okay? So that's sort of your, your main ball bearing. And uh, these balls in these plates are lubricated with a clear silicone grease. And then over here you have your thrust bearing, which is basically a smaller version of this ball bearing. But you have, again, two plates with smaller balls, and this sits inside of one of the diff out drives. And you use uh, axle grease for this. I think because in here it's all metal on metal parts. And then here with this uh, uh, bigger, diff uh, bigger ball bearing, uh, these balls seat against a, a plastic housing. Usually the diff pulley or the diff gear is plastic, so you, use a, you need a different grease there. But either way, uh, what happens is these are connected to each other through this uh, uh, thrust bolt, and the thrust bolt uh, has a spring on it with a nut at the end, so you can tighten this bolt down to get more tension in the spring, which basically presses these plates together more. It puts more pressure between the plates and the balls and that tightens the diff. Or you can loosen it and then the uh, plate to ball pressure drops and you get a looser diff. So there are different approaches uh, for how to manage a ball diff. Uh, so I guess we'll talk a bit about adjustability and a bit about breaking them in. Um, we'll start with breaking in. So what some people want you to do is when you build the ball diff, they want you to, to break the diff in, which basically means the diff plate is gonna start off as a smooth surface. And by essentially, you know, holding one wheel and then uh, uh, running the car at partial throttle and letting the other wheel spin, you're allowing this diff to spin a whole lot and the uh, balls will sort of break in like a, like a groove or a seat into each of these uh, diff rings. And some people really like that because it allows that ring to sort of settle in place in a, in a more controlled environment where you're not beating up the car on a track. Uh, you're just literally holding one wheel and letting the other wheel spin and, uh, in a controlled way. And so presumably that would give you a more uniform break-in of the uh, diff rings. <clears throat> And that may work for some people. The problem that, that I personally see with that, and again, I think this is just preference, is that you're basically wasting time on the diff. So if you run a diff brand new, like every car that I've ever built that was brand new and raced it brand new, I never broke in the diff. I would run the, the diff rings perfectly fresh, you know, as they are out of the bag or box, just completely flat. And then as the diff wears in, or as I use the car, you know, more and more, I just check it after every one or two runs. And I'll, you know, rotate the wheel, see if it's, see if the diff is uh, getting looser. And if it gets looser, I'll tighten it up a little bit. And I'll just keep doing that and just break the diff in over time as I'm actually racing the car. Um, part of the reason for that is because, at least for me, uh, you know, a fresh diff with fresh diff rings that aren't broken in, is actually perfectly smooth. Like, I, you know, it's not like you're gonna notice a difference in the smoothness of the diff, whether it's broken in or not. Um, so, and you know, over the length of a run, a five or six minute run, you're not gonna wear the diff that much within a given run. 
So you you're you're not going to have to worry about the different breaking in completely and 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 uh, setting up grooves within one run. Okay. So if you if you want like consistency over a run, it doesn't really matter if you're only running five, six, eight minutes per run. Uh, you can just break it in over time. So that's my personal preference. Also because I'm not a sponsored driver, I don't get parts for free. I gotta pay for all my stuff, and so I'm not gonna pre-wear out my diff rings, um, you know, just so I can get a few decent runs out of them and then throw them out and start all over again and break in the diff all over again. To me, that just seems kind of like a waste. <clears throat> Uh, so anyway, that's what the break-in and then as far as running and tuning them go uh, You know some some uh, Manuals and some people will say that a ball diff is not meant to be adjusted that you're supposed to tune it to a specific uh, Tightness and leave it at that value um, I don't necessarily subscribe to that theory. I think ball diffs do have a range of adjustability um, You know obviously you want it to be tight enough so that it doesn't uh, slip completely like a slipper clutch when the car accelerates because then you're not coupling power uh, uh, from the gear through the rings, through the balls, to the output shafts, okay? So you need a minimum tightness there. And usually that tightness is approximately like an eighth of a turn or a quarter turn away from full lock. That's kind of like a decent starting point. Um, you know, the, the, uh, I don't know about the new associated build manuals, but the older associated build manuals would give you that recommendation. If you go full lock and then you back off, I think an eighth of a turn, that's a good starting point. The problem with doing that on a brand new build is if you put everything together and then you crank down on it and then you back off, you're, you're pre-compressing the diff balls, right? If they're steel diff balls, like the, uh, the thrust balls, you're, you've already ruined the diff. I've done that a few times, and as you back off, you'll feel it, uh, the diff feel a little bit crunchy uh, as as you're as you're rotating the diff, even though every every part is brand new because you've already started to squeeze the the diff balls a little bit. So what you actually want to do is tighten it down a little bit until it's sort of hand tightened, and then rotate the diff a little bit, tighten a bit more, rotate it, tighten a bit more, rotate it. Keep doing that until you're at a point where as you progressively tighten that thrust bolt, it feels like it's maybe not all the way tight, but pretty close. And then from there you can back off. And that's a way of progressively tightening in the diff when you're building it as it's brand new uh, without, uh, um, you know, non-uniformly compressing the diff balls. Because at least if, as you rotate it a little bit each time, as you tighten it down, maybe you compress the diff balls a little, but you're doing it throughout the rotation of the diff ball. So you get a bit more uniform uh, sort of pre-compression, if you will, uh, if you end up having, if you end up doing that to the diff balls. So, okay, uh, what else do I wanna say about ball diffs? Um, so what's great about them is that, you know, they are more readily tunable. It's just, you know, depending on the car, uh, two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, you know, you take off one of the camber links, you get in there with your, your two millimeter screw or, or uh, you know, was it 564 screw on the old associated buggies and you just tighten or loosen the, uh, you know, the, the thrust bolt, put everything back together and you're ready to go. That's a lot faster than adjusting a gear diff like on an eighth scale, uh, you know, buggy or truggy, for example, where you have to actually like take a gear diff out and clean all the oil out uh, and then put new oil in and let the bubbles aerate out and then put the diff back together. It's a real pain in the butt. Um, <clears throat> but there are advantages to that, which I'll get into. So it's easier to adjust, which means if you want to, to quickly tune, you know, how much steering the car has, like if you want more steering, you might want to loosen the front diff and or tighten the rear diff uh, to get the, the, the front to turn more or the rear to rotate more. Or if you want less steering, you go the other way. Um, or if you know the the traction level changes. If you're on a low grip surface, you tend to want to run tighter diffs, so that way uh, you're not uh, overspinning the wheel that has the least amount of grip. If you're on a low grip surface, um, so you can do that quickly with ball diffs, and that's a, a, a good advantage. The problem is that ball diffs do wear. It's part of the property of ball diffs because you have pressure between the diff plates and the diff balls. They are going to wear out. Okay, with a gear diff, you don't have that problem. It's just, you know, planetary gears inside of a, uh, 
of a diff housing that's filled with oil and the oil kind of dampens the gear movement. Okay, so gear diffs are a lot stronger, but they are heavier um, and they do take longer to tune because again, you have to get all kinds of different oils depending on how what you want your range to be and you gotta take it all apart and clean it out and put oil in and go through all that nonsense. Um, so it's, you know, there are puts and takes either way. Um, if I'm running a one tenth scale car, personally, I'll, I'll prefer ball diffs on my tenth scale cars. Um, you know, if, if I have the option, most cars just come with ball diffs, but some cars you have an option of running ball or gear. I'd rather run a ball diff. Um, but that's just personal preference. Um, let's see. Yeah. So as far as tuning goes, I think I kind of covered that on the ball diff side, at least for... 10th scale, pretty straightforward. Full wheel drive, you have two diffs. Again, if you want more steering, loosen the front diff or tighten the rear diff. If you want less steering, go the other way. If it's low grip, tighten both diffs. If it's high grip, you can loosen the diffs a little bit, get more steering, okay? With a two wheel drive buggy, same principle applies except you have just one diff. So if it's a low grip surface, tighten the diff. If it's a high grip surface, you can loosen the diff a little bit. Uh, you don't want to loosen it too much because then uh, the diff will slip and then you won't be able to couple power to the, to the, between the tires and, and, the, and the surface. Um, for A-scale buggies and for some one tenth scale buggies, uh, you, you not only have a front and rear diff but also a center diff. Okay, so the center diff just allows you to change how much power couples between the front and the rear uh, a part of the drivetrain. Now with most center diffs, uh, there's no anchoring to either the front or the rear, but with some of them there are. So if we go back to some 10 scale buggies, like older ones such as the Tamiya Avanti or the Kyosho Laser ZX, uh, those had center ball diffs, either as stock or as uh, optional. I think on the Avanti, actually no, with the Avanti it was a stock center ball diff and with the laser zx it was also a stock center ball diff and the way those ball diffs were set up is that they if i remember correctly uh they were biased toward a certain part of the drivetrain either the front or the rear which means that if the ball diff were fully loose you would get power to say only the front wheels and the rear wheels would basically free wheel okay and then if it were fully tightened, you have power to all four wheels. So basically with those kinds of center ball diffs on older 10 scale buggies, you're, you're changing how much power you're allowing to transfer to the pair of wheels that's not anchored to that diff. Okay. Um, now, under what conditions would you want to tighten or loosen a center diff? Or if it's a gear diff, you know, add respectively thicker oil or thinner oil. Well, again, it comes down to grip level. So if you have a low grip surface, you're going to tend to want to run a tighter center diff. Maybe even remo remove the center diff and just put in, you know, a conventional spur gear with a slipper clutch. Um, because that would give you even distribution between the front and rear wheels uh, for, for power distribution. Um, on a higher grip track... Uh, you would tend to want to loosen the center diff a little bit um, because there there might be some difference in rotational speed between the front and rear wheels during acceleration and braking, uh, which on a low grip surface doesn't matter so much because on low grip the tires can slip against the track and they can accommodate any difference in rotational speed between the front and rear wheels. And what you want to do is just get power to the wheels as much as possible because it's a low grip surface and you just want to get the wheel spinning so you can move forward. Um, but on a high grip track, there's less slippage of the tire against the surface. And so you want to accommodate for that slippage with the center diff, okay? Um, I think that kind of covers it. Diffs aren't all that complicated, okay? Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> I'm really not sure what else to say about this uh, other than that. So if you have any uh, comments or any, any questions in particular about setting diffs or how to adjust diffs, uh, just leave them in the comments section. And thanks for watching.